20 Minutes with Mark Patterson. A snapshot of life in the Northwest. Yes, folks, this is an interesting one. And in terms of a, a huge development, um, which I just heard this morning on Radio 4 with regard to renewable energy from Scotland to England. Closer to home, folks, Heron, H-E-R-O-N, Heron Energy, <coughs> pardon me, have submitted an application to the Mid-Ulster District Council for the construction of a 40 rapid charging point hub. Uh, they're a tomb just off the uh, new A6. The facility would be the largest uh, EV charging point uh, in Northern Ireland thus far, if it is built. Mark McCall is chair of the Electrical Vehicle Association of Northern Ireland. Mark, how is it going? Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mark. Going well, thanks. Yeah, more, more good news today. Good, good, good. We'll talk about it. I'm not shifting to the electric just yet. How's your motor? Going well. I think you, you should have a look at something like the, the little VW Up, the E Up. It would be a great car for you. That's a car. I want a wagon with an open back yep. that I can turf cement into. Oh, with a little hatchback too. I want, you, no, you I, want, to is, no, I want a wee utility vehicle. 50 mile oh. an hour, man, you know. We'll get you sorted out, don't worry. <laughs> Mark, this is interesting. Just describe, have you got Have you got the detailed hand there? Sorry, I should have checked. I, I mean, we go up, we know that there's now a massive new uh, roundabout there which takes us into yes. the old tomb. Are we talking there? Yeah, we're just uh, uh, sort of on the, the very northwest tip of, of Loch Ney um, uh, at a business park up there. So it's a plan for up to 40 uh, rapid chargers. So w w we've seen uh, similar plans to this, not as big as this, but... <laughs> Um, when we get to these sort of numbers, generally they phase them. You know, there, there might be phase one of ten and, and another ten or, or whatever. But um, it's certainly a, a great news that well, someone's making this investment. Why is Tomb right, or is it right, Mark? If you left Derry, you were coming up to, to do this program with a full yep. charge in your motor. Uh, how far would you get before your motor it's, needed recharge? So in a little VW, um, 160 miles. So um, you could, that's you enough. Could probably, 72 yeah, miles. You could, you'd get you there and back, wouldn't you? Just, just there about. But you know, as we often say, even someone with a good 200 mile range car, say you live in Uri, you're going to Portrush on a Sunday uh, to go to the beach, or whatever. You're going to need a, a, a charge uh, probably to get home. So, yeah. uh, pu public charging. Our members would say that most of our members would attempt the public charge. You know. Some some several times a month, uh, some occasionally, but mm. it, it's very important. Yes, we're we're all charging at home where we can, but public charging is important too. The, the, there are some really expensive ones you can get three, four hundred mile out of a charge. When that becomes the norm, Mark, I suggest for people like us, that's the game changer because you could drive well, anywhere in Ulster and back yep. on a three hundred, yep. four hundred mile charge. Northern Ireland certainly, um, you know, ideal size for for EVs. Um, we we talked a lot of the car dealerships, and they quite often say to us that people want uh, a car that can drive to Dublin Airport and back without charging. Yes. Uh, you know, so Belfast to Dublin's 100 miles, or whatever. So, two, 200 mile range is pretty good. But again, you know, if you want to if you want to uh, set off to Cork tomorrow, or you you want to tour Scotland or whatever, public charging is still important. So, if you're going to Donegal this weekend, are you stopping in Tomb? Imagine it's built. Are you leaving Belfast? Are you stopping in Tomb? Or are you going all the way up to Donegal and stopping in Tomb on the way back? Well, you know, how would you how you know as a driver? Yeah, well, I guess as an EV driver, certainly as a new EV driver, you need to do a little bit of planning. So there, there is a little bit more thought. But uh, every week we're seeing in Northern Ireland some some new site come online or some new site heading the planning. So that that sort of panic is subsiding. Um, and and we, you know, there's hardly a, a town or a city now in Northern Ireland you couldn't go and, and feel fairly confident that you'll get mm. onto a rapid charge. But I do it any time I check. It's like this one's bust or they're both bust because there's a map you can go into. It must do your heads yeah. in as, as as drivers. Are we still the worst? provided for in the United Kingdom when it comes to EVs? Yeah, well, so the latest figures come out from the Department for Transport um, just this month and the sort of average of chargers of all speeds per 100,000 populations, the one we always quote because it's a good fair comparison, and for Northern Ireland we're sitting at a 32 currently and the UK average is 96. Ugh. So, yes, we're still way behind, but Man. we have to say that we, we are improving every day and we're seeing, you know, as an organisation, we're around for seven or eight years now. First five years, we, we, we just saw, you know, the network shrunk uh, in, in the first five years, mm. but in the last two years in particular, we've gone from 20 rapid chargers in Northern Ireland to around 150 today. Which is still so, tiny, man. It's it, it's it's still behind, but yeah. it, you know we have to acknowledge that the change uh, the change has been made and and that it's happening. Every and do day. you charge in the house? I mean, do, do, do does the grid charge you big money, Mark, or what do you, what do you get in a fill for? 
So Northern Ireland does not have smart meters yet. That's another thing we're behind on. But um, DFE have said that that's coming possibly as early start starting as next year, um, and that will allow us that sort of agile tariffs where you see seven p per kilowatt hour and, and prices like that in uh, GB. But you charge so, the house, don't you? Charge at home on the Northern Ireland, the cheapest overnight rate on economy seven is fourteen p. And how much, um, how much still, would that cost you for a fill? That's costing you three or four miles, uh, three or four pence per mile. So right. it's, it's, you know, comparing to maybe 13p for a petrol You see, and then it makes the argument thereafter then for solar. I have the solar and I can't wait if I ever do go electric because I'll essentially get free motor in them because the boy that put the yep. solar up says you can prioritise your, your solar panels to charge your car before it does anything else. So that's exactly. an argument to take us in that direction. But Stormont drags its heels on all of this stuff, doesn't it, man? We certainly like to see more action uh, from the executive. Um, you know, we'd like to see e- even the CDFI improve their messaging around the transition to EVs would would be a good start. We're hoping to present to the infrastructure committee of Stormont next month, and we, we certainly have a, a raft of of things uh, that we're asking for. So, if people are googling yeah. the way, it's the Cray Business Park in Toome, C R E A G H Cray Business Park, Toome. Uh, they aim to have forty rapid charging points. I haven't got the completion date on that. Uh, that's a 34 megawatt battery energy storage system. Do we know where they get the electric from? By the way, is it solar or anywhere? Is it off? Tell me, it's not off the grid, Mark. Is it? Maybe it is. Uh, no, it'll, it'll not be. But they are putting a large uh, battery uh, on the same and site. What's charging uh, the battery? Energy. <laughs> so it will be it'll be grid connected. Oh Lord! Um, they, may, they may have some solar. Why did they not take uh, the opportunity the... to put a, a windmill up on solar and do it really modern? Well, I think it's a it's a thirty eight uh, megawatt site. It, it's enormous, um, and it, it'll help um, cer- certainly with our um, electricity supply in Northern Ireland. You know, as as we move to more and more renewables, we need more and more storage so that we we can batteries can kick in whenever the wind does drop down. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a very very good decision. Mark, I know you're a voluntary group, and you can't expect you to create the difference, but you you most certainly do in your own ways. But I mean, are, you, are people like you speaking to the government ahead of the A five? There's a lot of uh, thinking that. Uh, eventually the new A5 will start to kick in in real terms uh, this year. Would you hope that they would plan for this kind of a thing on the Belfast, on the new Belfast, uh, Stra- or, sorry, Derry, Straban, Oma, uh, Dublin route? Surely they'll have the brains to think, well, you know, maybe we need yeah. to have some charge points along the way. Yeah. Exactly, we we need to see some some sort of forward thinking there, and and that the infrastructure, particularly electrical infrastructure, is in there to allow uh, ra- rapid uh, charging hubs like this to appear, mm. because that's very much the barrier at the minute. Planning uh, is uh, sort of undefined uh, time at the minute, but also getting a grid connection is very difficult. So what about um, just what about tax incentives then? You're saying you pay the going rate for the electric that you charge your car, whereas if you had a what did you call it? Other places charge a quarter of the price if that electric is being used at home to charge the motor. Is that right? So you need a smart meter. Smart um, meter. Which, which yeah, I think Northern Ireland is going to be basically the last country oh, in Western Europe to, to roll out smart meters. That they're in GB, obviously, in, in Ireland. And is that and what that does? Basically, says, "Oh, look, we'll charge you a bit less than that because that was it, that was yeah, for the car." Uh, it gives you um, 48 half-hour slots across the, the 24-hour day where the price can change. So pr- prices will go up when everyone's turning on the oven at, at dinner time, but prices yeah, will yeah. fall dramatically at, overnight uh, whenever you can charge your car or when the heat pump. Whereas yeah. at the minute you plug in the house, and it, no matter what time you plug in, you're paying the full whack. Yeah, you can only get a, a, the two times in a domestic setting. You can only get an economy seven meter. So uh, that's general, generally a seven hour period um, from one, 1 p.m. Um, to, to eight in the winter and from 2 p.m. to a.m. sorry, to 9 a.m. in right. the summer. So that gives you a discount. Uh, Mark, just a final word. And thanks for, I'm sorry for rushing people, but just the, so much ground, for, forgive the pun, to cover with fellas like yourself. I meet a lot of people that are not convinced yet by electric. They're saying, look, it's, it's going to be a blip, but it's going to be a short term thing. I'm going to wait the hydrogen and I'm going to wait until coal and yeah. gas you know we've fully got the grips on I make the point because yeah. of this super highway did you see this today across the water a multi-billion pound subsea cable that can shift vast amounts of renewables between Scotland and England has been given the go ahead by the regulator and the new government and all the rest um, yeah. the uh, en- energy transfer between Aberdeen and the northwest of uh, northeast of England uh, part of the wider moves to modernise increased capacity at the minute Scotland on days will produce vast amounts more electric than the system system can cope with, Mark, and now yes. this thing will say, no, just pipe it down to England and get the renewables pu- pi- piped in in massive, meaningful ways. And yet I still meet an awful lot of people who are not convinced yet uh, by the EV argument. 
Yeah, interconnectors are vital, you know, and, and the more the merrier. It, it certainly improves with, with uh, uh, sharing that electricity when, whenever the wind's blowing in, in different parts of, of the country. So mm-hmm. that's a good thing. As regards hydrogen, anyone who's looked into the physics of, of a hydrogen vehicle will know why the numbers are so tiny. I think the first quarter of this year, there were something like 93 hydrogen vehicles sold in the United States. Well, people, well there's buses, you know, there's some buses, hydrogen buses made in Balamina in this jurors in, in, the, in the UK. Yeah. I mean, people say yeah. hydrogen can explode, but like, there's nothing more explosive than petrol. Yeah. I think Trans, Transnic originally got 20 uh, hydrogen vehicles along with their first lot of 80 battery electric vehicles and they, they tell us they have no intentions of buying hydrogen ah. again. They're dear to buy, dear to run, dear to maintain. So I don't think hydrogen is, is really a goer in, in surface transport. All right, Mark, our time is gone. You'll be on, when the time comes, you'll be stopping for a, a chocolate bar and a cup of, cup of tea and tune, will you? Look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That's a, 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 we're delighted to get uh, another wee piece there from Mark McCall uh, from the Electrical Vehicle Association of Northern Ireland. They're very good on social media. Uh, E-V-A-N-I. Check them out.